All right. Let's see if some people join in here. First time trying to do this, so let's see if this works. So this is unannounced. So I'm just kind of doing this here on the fly. We'll see if anybody pops in. Um, but I'm going to be doing some CAD cleanup today and have a project here, DWG, that I've brought in. And we're just going to do some simple basic CAD cleanup and just go through that process, maybe spend 30, 40 minutes. So I'm going to hang out just a little bit, answer any questions um, regarding the channel and the kind of name change that has happened recently as well. So this is the Winning with SketchUp channel that I have rebranded or renamed as 3D Artistry. Um, which is now a landscape design tutorial or 3D landscape. Let's say landscape visualization is a better way, I think, to say it. Uh, tutorial page. And the reason why I changed the name from uh, Winning with SketchUp is to uh, largely uh, branch away from, from SketchUp. Uh, as the primary thing, so I can focus on just a variety of different softwares. So um, if anybody is in here, let's see. Let me... All right, so let's see. And just pop this link over. And a couple places here. And see if we... get any uh, viewers here. I am just going to be working on this project here. And this is just a backyard landscape design, basically. Um, but I want to make sure that my audio and everything is good. So it's telling me my bit rate is a little too high. Let me change that. Let's see if that helps a little bit. All right, if anybody is um, there, just pop a hi in the chat and I am going to be getting started here. So this is a project here. Like I said, it's just the back. And I have just a small little patio here. With uh, spa, we have 
a window well here. Looks like, okay, so this is some storage here with a hydraulic lift to access. And a planting bed behind, um, raised composite decking here to connect the porch covered or connect covered porch with stoop. So essentially the first thing that I want to do is to start to look through the plan and to just kind of get my bearings, if you will. So this is a brand new project. I'm just opening it for the first time. And I'm just kind of assessing what I am dealing with. So it's just the back. Um, I do have a plan for the house. So I have architectural drawings for that as well. I want to make sure that I am in that footprint so that if we start modeling the, um, the actual architecture, that everything is going to fit in the way that it should. Uh, just still waiting on a little feedback to make sure that the stream is up and sounds okay. Um, just pop a message in here. And I just want to see if everything is working here before I get too far ahead of myself. And like I said, this is the first time, so bear with me. I've never done the, a live through this channel. So I'm just going to pop this over in my Facebook group here. All right. So if we can get one or two viewers in here, we can uh, go ahead and just get started doing the CAD cleanup. And I am, I'm going to actually just do this the way that I would typically do it in my own workflow rather than um, just kind of, you know, talking through it as a brand new user. Um, but I will kind of explain the steps and make sure that we outline the plugins and things that I'm using as we go through this process. I'm starting with a pretty simple project here. This is just a small, like I said, backyard. We have a few different amenities um, like this spa. We have a little fire pit over here. We have some stepping pavers through here. Um, we have some patterned slabs in through here. And uh, we have a custom fire pit from Palo Forms. So I have a, an image for that as I get into the modeling. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up some of the site photos for this particular project. And we can kind of take a look at some of those. So let's see here. This is what the back looks like. So you can see the covered porch here. And this is a backyard, um, typical kind of development, black aluminum fencing throughout. Um, okay, so you can see that the, the fence stops short of the end of the house here. And if we jump back over into AutoCAD. Um, okay, so I'm guessing this is the view from the other way. So this is probably the view looking 
This is probably the edge of the house then. And let's see if we have a good shot back towards the house. Yeah, there we go. All right. So I saw some window wells. I'm assuming that's what this little piece of railing is. There's probably a window well down in here. Um, we have some window well on the other side. And let's see if we have a little closer shot. Here's a dead on shot from the backyard looking back towards the house. Um, a little bit of the roof is cut off, but it's enough that we could make out exactly what is going on back here. So the first thing we're gonna do is just get this CAD cleaned up. Um, I wanna kinda go look at the layers and see if there's anything that I can remove. If you guys have any questions along the way, let me know. Again, uh, just looking for one person to maybe tell me that the stream is working, you can hear me, see me, all that stuff. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna keep going here then. So the first thing I'll typically do is I'll jump in and actually I wanna move this over to the origin point. This is the way that it came into CAD from the DWG file. So this is this file here and I am looking at this in, in DWG TrueView from Autodesk. So if you get a DWG from a client and you don't have uh, AutoCAD and you, you don't have a license for AutoCAD, you can use the TrueView software to take measurements, um, to look at a DWG file and kind of see it as it would look in AutoCAD. You just don't have all of the tools. Um, I do have AutoCAD, but I love to use this viewer because it opens super fast compared to AutoCAD. So, and I can just uh, get into it really quick, see what's going on, and I'll typically rely on this even more so than um, opening AutoCAD. But All right, so I think what I'm going to do is just delete all of the CAD blocks here, first of all. So let's get in the group. Let's just delete all of these. And I'm going to move the whole project over to the origin point. And I think I'm going to grab it from this corner right here. And we're going to back up and just come over here. We're going to drop this right on the origin point and... Oh, thank you. Okay, so the sound is working. So I'm going to rotate from this origin point and I want to kind of get this lined up, right? Square to our XY axis or our, our green and red axis. All right, so as you can tell from our actor that's in the scene, this is not to scale. So what we need to do is scale our plan, obviously. So let's go back to AutoCAD and let's get a known measurement, right? So I'm going to come up here. We are in true view again. I'm going to grab the measure tool and I'm just going to hover over one of these edges here that I can take a measurement from. So this is 25.49. So it's roughly 25 and a half feet. So I will... Let's base it off of that edge here. I could probably do one of these. I usually look for the longest edge that I can, and that way it's a little bit more accurate. So maybe one of these edges up here. Let's just do this one. This I think this will work. So 25.4990. Let's go back to SketchUp. And I usually... You can use the tape measure tool, obviously. There's a plugin that I use to do this um, because it'll let me do it from outside the group. I don't have to get in the group to scale. Contextually, I can scale something just by grabbing it and doing it outside the group. And it's this little plugin from Ruby Sketch. And you can set the scale from a certain point. So let me just double check. It was 25.8. 4990. So I'm just going to click here, click here, and we're just going to type 25.4990. All right. Did I not select it? Hold 
25.4990. Oh. Of course, you're going to do this today. Um, all right, so let's get in and just use the old fashioned way. So, am I not hitting an endpoint here? Oh, you know what? I think I am scaling it, but I'm just not putting feet. So 25.4990 feet. Duh. Okay. It was the decimal measurement throwing me off. So now, now it scaled it, but we are um, back off of our origin. So let's just place it again. I'm going to grab this little piece. And when I'm doing a rear backyard, I will usually position it so that the patio and stuff is below the red axis. Uh, it's just personal preference. But I'll, I'll typically do it the same way every time. So I'll put that part of my house, that lower left corner like that, and I'll usually drop that right on the origin point. All right, so next thing I'll typically do is get into styles, and I'm just going to change this to construction documentation style. Makes it a little bit easier for me to see what's going on. All right, so we can now look through our tags here and see if there is any layers, you know, that we can get rid of. Um, the first thing I'll usually do is, you may not be able to see it, it's off the screen here, but I'm going to purge our tags. Let me move this over a little bit. You can see it right here. Um, so we're going to purge anything that isn't, that doesn't have any line work in it. So maybe some empty tags that have come over from a default template in AutoCAD um, from the, the landscape architect. Okay. So the next thing that I would recommend that I will typically do is I use Selection Toys, right? It's a pretty popular plugin. I'm sure a lot of people have it, have heard of it from TomTom. Tom. There's an option in Selection Toys that I set to a keyboard shortcut when doing these cleanups. And if you right click on an edge and you go to select, it'll basically allow you to select all active on whatever layer that particular edge is on, right? So I'll set that to a keyboard shortcut. And then if I select something, let's say it's a, it's a tag from a call out and there's a bunch of them throughout the whole DWG file, but the designer placed that tag on a specific layer. Well, then I can just select it and I'm just going to call, um, I'm just going to select basically everything on that layer like that. Right. So let's say it was this little light here. I could just select it run my keyboard shortcut and you can see that it's selected all the other lights and it's not selecting instances it's selecting everything on that layer so let's say this plant here i could just select it um you know which the these trees they're all on the same layer so i can get in and and very easily go through there so i, I want to double check here some of these lines in here that look like maybe they're call outs and it could just be that they are um, sometimes when a designer will put in a CAD block like these chairs they want to make them appear that they're on top of the patio and on top of the pattern so they'll get in there and basically cut through the uh, the hatch pattern, right? So they'll, they'll use the bounding box or the, the border edges or splines from that chair and use it to cut the, the pattern. So it looks kind of like that is going on. Um, let me see if at four feet there is... No. All right, so I'm going to actually select my edges that make up all of the joints here in this pattern and I'm going to group them and I'm just going to put them on their own layer I think so 
I'm just going to call this patio joints. Tag them for the new newer terminology here, patio joints. And okay. All right, so it looks like, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that none of those were actually the support of the border. So as we get in here and start closing things, and I'm going to get in here and basically grab all of our plant-related stuff, and I'm going to put that in its own layer, own tag as well. And I'm going to call this plant symbols. And here's a little tip. Um, as you're trying to put things on layers, a lot of times if you have a ton of layers and you have to scroll down and you can see that a lot of, a lot of stuff coming from AutoCAD will have symbols in front, like the dollar sign, a plus sign. So I can kind of do that as well. And I'll sometimes drop a few plus signs in front of it just to make sure that it goes up to the very top as I'm selecting things. I don't have to scroll down. So let's just grab a few of these plant symbols. And again, oops. Let's grab everything on those layers. Let's grab this, those, those. And let's throw them in that plant symbol layer and let's just hide that for now. All right, so this is an elevation for something in the patio. We're going to save that. We don't need that right now. We don't need the text here. So I'm going to select one of these edges and use the keyboard shortcut there for select. Again, I'm using the keyboard shortcut for active on selected layers. So if you select one edge, right click, go to select. And if you have selection toys installed, this should be in your context menu. So we're going to do that. And then now we can select basically everything that's on that layer. I'm just going to delete those words or the text. They're not coming in as actual SketchUp words. They're just coming in as lines. So I don't really need those. All right. The, the next thing I'll typically do is go and change my, my lines to get rid of the dashes. So I'm just going to come here in my tag menu. And if you click on the line itself, I'm just going to come down and make that the default edge style. And that just helps with snapping. Let me pull this out a little wider. All right, so these are not actually a line style. These are actual edges that are broken. All right, so now let's get in here and start cleaning things up. And I'm just going to start in the back. And the first thing I'll typically do is I want to make sure that all of the edges are intersecting in some way, um, particularly for our patio in the back, right? So I'm going to get in and let me actually put these chairs in that plant symbol layer. I think this might be a symbol as well. Let me throw that in there. All right. So this house is something that I think I can just hide for now. So it's on the existing house layer. I'm going to come down here and just hide that or maybe not. Okay. So it's just this group. So I'm going to actually just throw this in the symbols layer that I made just to hide it. And I know if you have OCD, that'll drive you crazy, but I'm just doing this temporarily to kind of remove things as we're doing cleanup. And I, I want to see what this edge is right here, first of all. All right, so this looks like um, a utility marker. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I don't need that for the 3D. Now, again, I can select everything that's on that utility layer, and I'm going to delete that as well. And now we're kind of to a good starting point here. 
the first thing I'll typically do is use edge tools and I want to check for uh, edge gaps essentially. Okay. So I have it on a keyboard shortcut. Um, but the toolbar is right here. Let me pull that toolbar out just so you know which tools I'm talking about. This is from TomTom Tom as well. So we're just going to click there and check for edge gaps or open ends. Okay, so you can see we have 486 open ends. But watch what I do here. I'm going to basically group all of this. We're going to group it. And then we're just going to explode it. And that's it. Okay. And now let's run that again. And oh, we got rid of some. We didn't I think this there's another group in here that is causing open ends. And this is the house. So I'm going to um, explode that. And I'm going to do that again. Basically, all this is doing is an intersect, but to me, it works faster than the native intersect. So I'm going to group everything and explode it. And now let's run our open ends again. We're down to 425. So you can see that we closed a lot of those issues that were going on in around this area. And now from here, what we can do is just get in and manually either click here to close these ends. We might have to adjust our uh, distance depending. So I turned this up to six. It was a little bit too much. So now we're going all the way through and connecting to the other side. So I'm gonna back that up. And I'm just gonna run a line across there, delete that. Let's run an, uh, uh, an edge or a line across here. Let's check our open ends again. And you can see we have one here, have one here. And if I check it again, that got rid of those. So that basically closed those up. So now I'm just going to kind of do that process. I'm going to continue to check open ends. And if there's one, I can either try to close it with the tool like that. Um, you can see that it it's set too big. So I'm going to drop this down to two inches. It's still too big, one inch. If you get it right, it will remove that. If, um, you know, basically the distance that you're plugging in for that tool, if it's shorter to delete it at one inch than to come across at one inch, if it can't reach, then it'll delete it. So there's a little bit of, of messing around to kind of dial that in. I'm, I'm going to group and delete that little piece there that's hanging over. Let's check it again. We're down to 419. Um, I think there's a chunk down here that's making up most of these. Um, so to kind of avoid that, I'm going to group that and that'll remove it from, and now we only have 22. All right, so we have a little bit of an overhang here. And what you can do if you have a bunch that you know is overhanging is just select it like that. And then we can also use uh, erase straight curves in edge tools. And that would delete that as well. And now if we run our open ends, you can see that that's gone. All right, so let's check it again. Down here, these are a little bit short. So in that case, I'm just going to turn this up. Let's turn it up to six inches maybe a foot or these might be sitting above. Oh, this is a, a group. That's why. All right. So let's explode that. That should, when we explode that, it should um, intersect anything that's overlapping and break whatever edge is overlapping. So now I can just grab that and run erase straight curves and those are gone. Again, let's check our open ends. Okay, it should probably be the same up here. And then we have another one here, I think. And I'm just running erase straight curves. As long as it's hanging over, that'll work. If it's too short, you end up erasing the curve. 
Um, but I can kind of tell just by how that line looks. And then down here, all I'm going to do is just drop an edge here. Erase straight curves right there. And one of the, the best things that I've ever figured out in SketchUp, which sounds so stupid and so simple, is when you have a plugin like Erase Straight Curves, or there's many plugins that do this, they just pop up one annoying dialogue, right? And it's, you don't want to have to constantly move your, your mouse back to hit the OK button. Just hit the space bar and it'll close the dialogue. So that's something that I just happened to stumble on and in, in doing by accident. And ever since then, it's really saves a ton of time. So what I can do here, again, I'm just going to draw an edge down. Now, really quickly, instead of getting the eraser, doing all that, I can select that, erase straight curves. I hit space bar, and it just closes the dialogue, and it's almost all one smooth um, action. So now what I'm going to do is start closing faces because I think we're down to zero. Oh, we have a couple over here. These are probably hanging over. I'm going to see that one was too short, so it deleted it. Okay, so now let's do, um, let's see if we can reach. There we go. Now the, the edge gap inspector should be at zero. All right, so you can see we have a big face here. Um, that kind of closed, but we don't have these little interior faces closed. Uh, the quickest way to do this is to just use a plugin. Uh, you know, if you really want to make sure that you're getting everything properly, there are times where these plugins fail. I mean, obviously, what you can do is just go in and start laying down some edges like this. But typically, I'll select all, and the one I use the most is uh, S4U make face. And I'll just run that. It seems to me to be the fastest and most consistent, uh, predictable results when I'm doing that. All right, so we have a bunch of red faces here. I'm going to turn on monochrome mode. And you can see that we have some issues with overlap. Um, there's some faces that got made twice on top of each other. So we can go and manually rotate around if we see this z fighting where you get this flickering you can just select that face and delete it and if you have a, a situation like this where you have a ton of small reversed faces like inside the house here here's a really good trick to do this all with one click of a button i can reverse all these faces at once and we're going to use from frito tools we're going to use reverse orient faces. All right, so this will give us a dialog box. And what we can do is make sure we have basically this button right here, which is all connected faces. And then this will be the orient button. And then this is the reverse button. We want the orient button. So now with this button selected and this button selected, all we have to do is click on one face that's facing the normal way. And it'll, it'll, reverse the entire thing. So even all of these little faces in here that need reversed. So I thought that is a, um, a helpful little tip. All right, so now we should have all of our faces in here. Um, we kind of just want to make sure that there's no issues where this will happen a lot. Um, you know, you think you made the face, but it's selecting both of these and it hadn't broken at that line. So one of the ways that I'll do that is to just pull up with nothing selected, pull up the move tool. And now I can just kind of hover through my model and see if there's anything that looks weird where the face isn't what it should be. And I think everything looks pretty good. All right, so we have some lines out here in the yard that are probably setback lines or utility lines. Um, so for 3D purposes, the only line that I really need to keep is the fence line. 
So that is this green one here. And let's see. That is this line here. It's on the fence layer. So everything else I think we can get rid of. This is an easement. And let's just delete that. You can see that it broke our face there, but that's no big deal. We can fix that super easy. Um, we're not really doing the front anyway, but just to kind of show. Um, all right, maybe we can't. All right, so there's probably an open end, right? So this is that edge I just drew, I think. And then there's some issue here. That looks like a double. So there's probably a gap there that we didn't pick up on. So I'm going to close that extra edge. And just to make sure there's only a single edge here, I'm going to drag select right to left and then deselect the face. And just look at my account in the entity info and it's just a single edge. So that's exactly what we want. And I think this edge here. Okay, so that might. That's probably the walkway there. Okay, so I'm assuming walkway, grass strip, and curb here for those red lines there. So we we do need those here to come across. We can't delete those. So let's just con uh, connect from here to here. But I think what I'm going to do is just delete that and... I'm going to delete this edge and I'm just going to come all the way back. I'm just going to draw this up past it and make sure that I stay on the red axis. And you can see when I did that, it's not connecting now. And that's okay. That's good because that lets me know that the edge itself is square and true. If I would have drawn that edge from that point and snapped it to there, it would have been a little bit off axis. Not a big deal on a driveway, but can be a big deal in some other situations. So I'm just gonna trace this line here. That should um, break that. And we might have a little edge gap here as well. I'm gonna actually delete that edge and redraw it just to make sure it's true on the green. And, it, it, and there we go. Now I should be able to close this with just one little edge there like so all right so now we're ready to start modeling right but I would not recommend modeling at this point so the thing that I'll typically do at this point is get in and start to prepare for modeling by grouping the things that I want to group at this point so I want to figure out what's what in my plan all right so we have this little window well here I'm going to select the window well, and I'm going to group it. I'm going to select the inside. I'm going to group that. Now, I know the fire pit here. Um, I am going to select, actually, the patio here first, because if I would group this fire pit, it typically won't break the patio. You can see that it just glued it, whereas if I group the patio first, and then group the fire pit. You can see that it left a hole where the patio is. So because I want to, um, you know, depends, this, this patio is not quite that situation, but a lot of times if I wanted to do a border around the fire pit or there was some reason for me to break pattern right there, maybe I was doing something that had displacement or grass joints or grass, I don't want that stuff coming up through the fire pit itself. So I would want to cut that out. So typically I use as a, as a process and a practice to group whatever's on the outside first and then group whatever's on the inside second. And that way it doesn't have that issue where um, it'll glue itself to it and then not break the face or leave the hole in the face that we're looking to do. All right, so we have what I think here is a plant, a raised planter that's kind of um, anchoring and creating almost what feels like a room space for the patio itself. And this is a composite wood to match the decking. Okay. All right, so this is all the existing. Let's look at that one more time. Um, I'm 
just trying to figure out where this breaks here. All right, so basalt stone paver bordering patio, patio as edge. So this is all of this here. And then I'm assuming probably right here, there's just a line or an edge missing. Um, so I'm just going to break it myself as we come around, probably right here. And let's just drop an edge right there. And now I'm going to group that separately and then group this separately. I'll get out, just explode those. So now those are in their own groups. And this piece here is a pocket. So the patio is basically going to have these two spots here where you can basically exit the patio. And then these are planting pockets in here. Okay, let me just double check where that is. Okay, yeah, so that is running some ground cover up through the patio with another little piece up here. So this is going to be planting, this is going to be planting, this is planting, and this is planting. So at this point, if we want to, if it starts to get confusing, we can just go ahead and drop a material in there. So let's just grab a brown-ish material and I'm just going to go ahead and drop that inside of the groups here. Let me get out of monochrome mode. And those are the planting pockets that we've grouped. This is our main patio area. Let's group these two pieces here as well. And the inside of the raised planter will be mulch. So again, I went from inside out just to kind of show. When you do it that way, you end up having to, you'll, you know, you'll have this outer piece that no longer has that, that break in it. So always go outside in. Explode that. Let's go, um, let's go here first. And now you can see that it's broken that. So always go outside in. And now let's drop a mulch material in here. I'm just going to lighten this. Um, and some material here as well. So I think I'm just going to drop some default material through the rest of it. Just for my eyes, this this red bugs me. And I'll do select all with same material here. Just drop that in. All right, there we go. So we're starting to just piece it together. These are steps back here. I'm going to group that. I'm going to group that. And if you don't know why we're grouping everything at this point, it'll start to make sense as we get to build things because it kind of gives us um, the container that we're going to build that part out of. So this is a planting bed over here. Let's sample. Let's sample um, here and just drop that in with a through paint. I'm using the through paint two plugin, which is this here. So this is from Frito as well. All of these and these are from TomTom. Tom. And this is from S4U. All right, so we have a step here. Um, so here's kind of one of those instances I was trying to talk about earlier where you can see that when we select the face, it didn't respect these edges and it didn't make these faces individually. So if I group this and look at it, this is what it actually looks like, right? But I'm going to explode this and let's get in and try to fix it. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I think a lot of 
that has to do with the fact that there is a group right here. So this is the decking that I think is going to sit underneath the hot tub area right here. And I'm going to cut it for a second. I just want to look underneath and kind of determine um, if I can explode it. And if we need these interior edges for modeling purposes, um, this is probably a privacy wall. Yes, it is. Okay, so the four posts here for a pergola, it's going to be a, a louvered smart pergola that will go over this space. Um, looks like probably into this whole area here. Everywhere that it's gray will be this, this smart pergola. Um, So how's everybody doing? You guys doing good? Been I was trying to wait for everyone to get in before I started. Um, so if if you're just joining and I'm ahead, then you can watch the replay. All right. So let me just paste that back in there for a second. And that is probably the outer boundary of where that pergola up, um, up above is going to be. So it can get a little tricky when you start to get these edges here um, and they're all overlapping. So this is another reason to kind of get in and start to group things as well, because that way I can start to work out and identify exactly what is in the model. And I think what I'm going to do is try to group the house here separately. So let's select the interior and then I'm going to grow the selection. And that's going to actually pick up some stuff out here. But I think for the most part, we got it. Um, I used quad face tools here to grow selection. Um, you can also right click and go to select connected faces. And delete that face. Uh, let's delete the front porch. Uh, remove that from selection, not delete it. Like so. And let's group the house here. So I'm just going to get inside of it and look at it and make sure I got everything. It looks like I did. Sometimes I like to cut it just to make sure there's no little pieces in there. And then I'll just paste it right back into place. All right. So here we have this covered porch area. So a lot of this line work in here is going to actually be for um, the upper part of the the beam. So like the, the soffit on the roof of this porch. So let's look at that photo again. Oh yeah, that's right. This is all brick with a gabled front. And... Trying to understand what this piece here is. Okay, so that's probably this piece here where the grill is. And if I can see this from another angle, there is an opening on both sides here. Let's see if we can see inside of it. Nope. Okay. I didn't know if there was an opening on that wall. Uh, it doesn't look like it. it. Looks like the opening is on the back wall. All right. All right, so I'm just going to start selecting um, 
some of this line, I think I'm going to actually select the line work and not the face. And I'll show you why. But let's get in here. I'm going to use path select from uh, art uh, pa profile builder three is where this plugin comes from. And what you can do is just as you're selecting, I can I'm holding control so I can lift up and then press control again and we can add to selection, which you couldn't do that in the um, what was this? The UV sketch UV has this tool as well. But this is an updated version, which allows you to add to selection and to continue to grow the selection. So you do that by just lifting up control. Because if you hold control down, it'll just keep trying to find a path. But if you lift control up, it kind of stops trying and it waits for you to select a new path to start from. So I was able to select all of those edges there. And I think the interior edge here is probably but i'm going to cut them for a second okay and we're just going to make a group with nothing selected i'm going to run the shortcut for make group and now i made an empty group and i'm just going to paste these in here and i'm going to get in and just close these edges like so i'm going to grab that border and I can drop that back in there. And then there's this piece here, which I might need better sight photos to kind of figure out exactly what's going on as we're looking in through this way. But this is the grill island part. So I'm assuming this is... Uh, the wall here that's coming across and then our roof is going to sit kind of in this space here right so just to kind of visualize it our roof is going to be kind of like this at that point right so that's going to be this piece here and then it's going to have this return that's going to go back like that so All right, so that we have a planting bed right here and a window well on the back side. So this is all window well in through here. And then this is where the return, it looks like on this pergola is going to be. So the tricky part about grouping stuff like this is when you do this, you know, I start bringing in some of these edges that aren't necessarily for this piece. They might be for a piece up above it. So I'll usually grab them, cut them, and just paste them back into place outside of the group. And that way, if I have to delete them, I can delete them. But for now, I'll just... Um, Make sure that they're there as we're trying to figure out exactly how this is is going to lay out. All right, so it looks like this, all of this stuff in here is probably going to be part of that pergola. And I would say probably these edges here as well that we just dropped back in. like that so if I would just group like this and then try to move that you can see what happens is that I'm actually removing part of what's below it as I'm cleaning this up so this is where it can get a little bit tricky when you have CAD stuff that's over top of other CAD stuff uh, yeah I can throw it on a layer we can hide the layer but 
this is where I would typically try to select the edges and cut them or copy them depending. Um, so I've already made this piece here a group. So if I'm selecting this edge and I cut it, it's not going to remove the edge from this step piece here because it's already in a container. So that piece is already kind of secure. Let's see if I can select these here. So that's all of those edges. Um, all right, so we're, I'm just going to cut those and we're going to get a fresh group and I'm going to paste them in there. Close that. Let's make all those faces and let's just reverse that really quick. And let's just close this piece off here. And let me look back at that CAD file just one more time. So this is that planting bed and then we have this storage area here. Um, so let me see if I have some photos of what this looks like. All right, so this is kind of our patio stone that's going in. So this is a basalt paver, a really dark color. Um, this is the fire pit that's going in. With an option to do something like this. All right, so hot tub and deck, raised planter. All right, so this is kind of how the hot tub is going to be built into the deck. All right, I was hoping that there was a photo for um, the hydraulic lift storage area. So I'll have to figure that out. This we know is planting. So I'm just going to group all of this together. I'm going to actually assume there's a break right here. And I'll just paste that in there. So let's grab this. Okay. So let's group these areas. We'll come back to some of this stuff when I start to figure out exactly what it's going to look like and where those separations are. I might need to just do a quick quick call with the client and kind of figure that stuff out. I'm going to group basically everything around this. And now I can get in here and just drag select whatever's left. And I'm just going to kind of group that for now. And just kind of close some of this. Make sure there's no uh, groups in here. I'm just using make face. I'm just going to close all of those. Oh, this is a group. That's why. All right. So we'll, we'll just do the front as well, just to kind of show. Um, don't think that I need these edges right here. So let's take a look. Nope, that is the property line, I believe. So we're gonna delete that, delete that. And now I will group the driveway. Let's group the walkway. Let's group the step and the landing. And I'm just gonna group this whole front piece together. Let's group this flower bed drop some color in there. This is our dry this is our walkway. And 
And I believe this is the curb out here. All right, I'm gonna actually explode that and drop another edge right there. Um, one second, Paul, let me see. All right, so I think this is all grass in through here. I'm just going to clean that with Fix It 101. And I think I missed a piece, so let me... Um, Paul said, do you try to square the house up to the red and green? Yeah, I did that probably before you got in here. So that was the first thing I did. Um, yeah, I actually was saying when I'm doing a rear only project, this is just the back. I square up the, the house here. I usually do if it's just the back, I'll put the back left corner of the house on the origin point. And I kind of work south of the red axis for a project like this. But if it was a full master plan, for whatever reason, I actually spin it and I would put this corner on the origin point. Um, so the majority of the house is on those axis lines to make it easy. Maybe there's a better way or squaring the house up is not necessary. Uh, seems to, yeah, you definitely want to square up because, you know, anytime you use something like the rectangle tool or any, uh, you know, so many different things rely on that axis. So I always try to square things up and there's certain, uh, CAD programs that I'll get that will come in and half the plan will be square and then half of the plan will drift away from the red green axis and that's really frustrating i'll end up honestly having to redraw all of that line work just to make sure it's square before i start grouping everything and getting ready for modeling so yeah make sure it's square it's super super important um so at this point i don't i just want to make sure what i have grouped i'm just going to control a Select everything. I don't need this piece here. Uh, let me get back in that group. Um, all right, so now I can kind of see what I haven't grouped yet. So it's just really the yard out here. And if I have a yard where I have a lot of fall or I have a lot of pitch, I will basically delete this face. And then I'll start working on my walls. I'll get all my levels and then I'll rebuild the terrain. Um, but this looks, I think this is pretty flat through here. So I'm going to group all this together. This line here again is the fence. So we can group our yard here. Let's regroup our sidewalk. Um, I'm going to go grab a green material for the grass just to help kind of differentiate. Um, oops, I just want to use a regular color. I don't want anything to, to slow me down. So let's just grab... Just grab that guy there. And this is grass, this is grass, this is grass. Whoa, that's a little bright. So let me sample that and let's do something like that. All right, so in the beginning, if you didn't join us, we put all this stuff on a layer and we hid that and we also put a layer with the patio joints here. So I'm going to, I think, bring back the layer um, with the patio joints. And let me see if I can select that like so. I'm gonna cut that and let's get in and start dropping that in. Uh, I don't need all of this over here. So I'm gonna just erase all of, oops. Let me explode that first and erase all of those. So now I should have these divisions. There's a couple spots that need cleaned up. So I'm just going to use um, edge gap inspector and clean those up. So you have an issue here. This happens to me all the time. I don't know if you guys run into this problem, but where I know that that 
there's no intersection, but it's still doing that. I'll usually just delete it and then I'll just redraw the outer edges. For some reason, it seems to work. But yeah, Paul, when we st when I first started this, it came in, uh, the DWG wasn't to scale and it had a whole bunch of, you know, the CAD blocks and stuff on it. So it was way off axis and I scaled it and then I had to, to move it in. Uh, before I started doing anything, I set the axis because I think that's, you know, that's the time to do it rather than try to move stuff after the fact. All right, so I think we have this piece here too that's going to give us a little bit of information. I'm going to rotate this up and like that. I don't envision trying to get in here and close all of these faces. With a situation like this, I would probably just trace over it. So I think this is going to be uh, the planting bed I think it might be somewhere in here, but just double check. Um, per, uh, privacy wall here. So there's going to be a, a railing here on this window. Raised composite decking connected to porch over here. Okay. Um, enclosed area to serve. So I think right now these steps are wrapping all the way around to this wall. Okay, so I guess that's the start of that wall right there. And then it's going to take, this is the existing steps and I'm going to tie in these new deck steps here. So that might be something we have to do a little bit of figuring out here before I, I get to this part. So we'll, we'll save that for a part two, but I'm going to get in here again. Let's drop this line work in here. I'm going to hit uh, explode here. And then I'm going to run Erase Straight Curves to just kind of clean up all the rest of that. And let me just see here. There's a couple spots that aren't working. Again, I'll use the Move tool with nothing selected sometimes and just hover over this to see. So this is kind of that basalt paver in through here, the slab. And this will be our pattern. Um, I'll probably model these pavers themselves in 3D. And let's see. So I also have to check here if this is little end piece is supposed to be hanging over. Not sure about that. All right, so we have everything grouped. Let me drop this flower bed over here. Um, these are our wells and then there's a flower bed here. So we can start to kind of distinguish what's going on. Put a color out here for the concrete and the curb. And I'm just going to select that, desaturate it. And I'll drop color in for the driveway and I'll usually just pick a random primary color and then I'll go ahead and adjust it and the reason for that is if you know it depends like if you're trying to use a white and you have a a white that might be a vinyl or you have a white and you keep you come down here and you pick this white multiple times it'll actually create the same material if you don't give it a, a name so that's just me kind of rushing sometimes and being lazy and not naming all my materials from the beginning. I'll usually go back later and name those materials. So this is going to be a wood here. So let's just drop a different material on it. That. Select it. I'll just name it. It's not being lazy. 
All right, so I can adjust this something like this. And then we have our um, border here, which is going to be the basalt stone. Okay, so maybe it's the basalt that's just around the outside. And then these are more um, slab steppers in through here. Um, okay, so there is a joint here that got deleted, I think. Ah, okay. All right, there we go. So this little piece can go, and this little piece can go. And I'm just gonna grab both of those, cut them, and put them in our group here, and explode them. So there, that's that piece of patio. And then this is all of our border. That's a basalt, I'm gonna give it just another color. This is gonna be kind of that dark paver. Something like this. And at this point, if I wanted to get in here um, and make these into pavers, uh, I don't want this little piece here. I'm gonna adjust this, I think. I'm gonna just snap that right there. And then I'm gonna snap this up here like that. And just make sure there's no little tiny slivers hanging anywhere. Um, I think I might, Snap this one to that corner right there. There's a little piece hanging off. All right, so we can check it again with um, Edge Gap Inspector. There's another little piece hanging off over there. So we're gonna use erase straight curves. And what I'll do now is probably the fastest way to do this would be, um, hold on a second. This piece here is looking weird. So that's this piece here. I think I'll just run like this. Or maybe we'll do it like this. Something like that. All right, so now what I want to do is kind of group all these faces individually. Don't need that. And let me just fix this little gap here. There we go. So obviously we could get in and just start manually grouping all of these. Um, I could group them very quickly with a plugin like S4U2 Components. So we could select everything, run this, and now they are all component instances. Not all of them, but any one that was truly square. But I don't want to do that. And the reason for that is I want to bevel these. And the scaling over here, if I would bevel this, right, and throw a bevel on there. Actually, let's turn that up to maybe a quarter inch. 
the bevel would be different here as you get, you know, because it's it's essentially scaling. These are all component instances. They're just scaled instances of one another. So the bevel would look different from stone to stone. So I don't want to just make them that way. Um, you could make them that way. And then what I'll typically do is make them all unique before I do the bevel, right? And that'll reset the scale definition of all of them. So in order to make these all completely unique from one another, I use uh, Frito scale and I use the make unique option, which is right here. And I have that set to control U. So something like this, basically the fastest way for me to make these into 3D pavers would be select all, run S4U to components, select all again, make them all unique. Then I can use joint push pull thicken. I would give them all the thickness that I want, whatever I want it to be. Then I could select all of them and very quickly run a bevel operation. And that would create um, all the joints in all of this paving super, super fast. And boom, it's done. All right. Obviously, they're sitting up too high, so I would lower that down. And I usually snap it. Um, just to the bevel so I don't have a little gap, something like that. And I can do it one more time here. Um, again, I'm going to control A. We're going to make these, and it, the shortcut that I'm using here, just to, to let you know, is faces to components arrange. For whatever reason, this one seems to work the best. So I select all faces to components arrange. Now they're all instances. So if I would, these are all instances. You can see that they're all changing. So I want to make them all unique. So I'm going to use Frito Scale Make Unique. Select them all. And now we're going to go Joint Push Pull. And I'm going to use the Thicken option. You could use, you could use any of these, honestly. Vector, Follow, or Vector, Normal, Joint. Uh, I use the first one, Thicken. It's just works quick and dependable. Um, so normally I would do something like two inches, select them all, and now I'm using Frito's round corner to do a bevel at a quarter inch. And what that'll do is give the illusion of a joint inside of there. All right, so let's drop that back down. Now, let me actually raise it up to that bevel because if we drop it all the way down, you're going to have a little gap in there that you you can pick up on. So if you want to get rid of that, then you would just give your mulch bed a little bit of thickness, you know, something like that. And that way you, you don't really see down in that gap when you render, but you could also pick this up by a quarter inch. And it would hide it for the most part. And that little lip right there, not really going to see that once we get plants in here anyway. So something like that. So that's how I would approach doing that. Um, we have a little raised planting bed here. Let me see if we have a height on that. Called out. Um, wood planter to match decking. So I'm going to guess it's going to come to the top of this step. Maybe, and it's going to sit kind of right in front of this grill area here. So for now, I'm going to guess these steps are probably seven to eight inches. They look like eight inch steps, except for that bottom one. So let's just do, let's just do 16 because I'm going to make the fire pit 16 as well. So with nothing selected, I'm just going to use thicken joint push pull at this point i also want to start cleaning up what i'm making um, this should have some break lines in it if i turn on hidden geometry you can see those break lines there and that's where that 2d intersected there's two ways to go about that i could actually clean it up before i start to push pull it and you can do that with frito tools remove lonely vertices and that'll find those points there 
And now if I clean those up ahead of time, turn on hidden geometry, there's nothing there. So we've basically cleaned them up ahead of time. Um, but if I undo that, and we would get back to where we were, we have those there. We could also just do fix it 101. And again, fix it 101 is another one. Just hit that space bar as soon as you run it and it'll clear out that dialogue. You don't have to go and click OK. So we can do it again, and it works super fast with a keyboard shortcut. Just like that, I've cleaned whatever I made. Boom. It takes a, a millisecond. Okay, so I could probably get in here, clean these as well. They look pretty good. Clean this as well, they look pretty good. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Does that make sense? Bring this up here. Okay, so another way to do this, um, I use Curix Align all the time. So I would just typically do that and bring that up to height. And let's do the fire pit. Um, we do have a reference photo of what the fire pit is going to look something like. I think it's going to be either core 10 or concrete, something like this. Kind of looks like, kind of looks like this one, but um, I don't know if we have a decision. We might be showing the client a few different options for the fire pit. So for now, what we're gonna do is just get in here. I'm gonna group it from the outside in just going to thicken and let's go to 16 inches and again I'm just going to use Curic Align throw that top piece to the top like so and I'm not going to do a whole lot of modeling on this right now just because I don't fully know what this piece is going to be let's just lower this back down a little bit um, let's throw a material on there just random it's, this is an ugly color right here but I'm gonna desaturate it drop it down let's just make it kind of like a concrete ish material and then this is uh, let's call this fire pit let's call this mulch oops mulchy all right and we're gonna do some kind of a big probably either a fire glass or some kind of big round spheres in here. I'll probably just throw on like a gravel texture. And then if we're going to do fire glass, I'll probably drive that with displacement in the render engine. Um, but if we're going to do something like these bigger chunky spheres, uh, that'll be fun. We can, we can model those in. So this looks like maybe it should be just a little bit wider. I'm going to scale this here like so. And we're just going to put a placeholder here. Let me go grab just a random color. Drop that in here. And let's just call this um, fire pit stone. Something like that. And I think what I'm going to do is just drop some random placeholders in here and show you guys how I would do that. So I am going to grab a random color. Okay, so let's just do, I don't know, let's just do this green color here. And I'm just going to drop it in, but I'm going to drop it into the outside of the group like this. And we're going to hit. Well, let me just sample it and lighten it a little bit, bring it up to a little more of a slab paver color. And then I'm going to make a copy of this just by hitting this little plus sign up here. We're going to add just a little bit of variation. I'm going to make a second one, call this paver two. And I guess I should drop that in there. We're going to name the first one paver one. 
All right, let's grab that second one. Let's make another copy. Let's give it a little more, maybe saturation. Something like that. Let's just drop that in there. And let's call this one paver three. And let's go make another one here. Make it a little bit darker. Let's just do four for now. So I have four, they're dropped in. They're, yes, they're on the outside of the group. They are not on the geometry itself. I'm just going to, first thing I wanna do is, and I should have did this first, but I forgot. I wanna select all. Well, let me just show you without doing it so you can understand why I'm doing it. So if I just select all, I'm gonna use a plugin from Eneroth called Randomize Materials. All right, so that is in the extension warehouse. Just if you go down on the first page here, you can see Eneroth 3, and it's it's her plugin called um, Randomized Materials. It's right here. So if I run that, you can see that it'll randomize over all of those stones. But the problem is it's also including the default material because the default material was included or counted in. Um, I wish she would kind of get rid of that. It's a weird thing to count that in, but um, I'm gonna go back and now I'm gonna texture everything, select all. And I'm just gonna deselect these four and then just drop that one, oops. drop that one material on everything else, right? And now when I run it, it won't have the default material in there. And now we can randomize, right? But the problem here is that they, the actual face itself isn't, doesn't have a material. So the way that we can get around that is we're gonna use a plugin from TomTom called Material Tools. And there's an option here called Instance Materials to Faces. Now, if I run that, you'll see this went back to default material on the outside of the group, but on the inside of the group, the faces are now textured. So pretty cool, huh? All right, so I'm gonna go back home in my materials here, or in model, and I can see I have paver. Uh, let me... Let me go list view here. Okay. Did I not name one of these? Oops. Okay, paver four, there we go. So now we should have all four of those. So now I can come over here and we're just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take paver one, do everything, deselect all, then paver two, paver three, paver, oops. Uh, paver three, okay. Select all, run Eneroth, and then I'm just gonna instance the face with a shortcut. And now we've textured all of these. So this works. It works as kind of a placeholder. If, you're, if you want to uh, texture these in like D5 render, Lumion or something, you could just put the placeholder in SketchUp and then replace it with one of their materials. But if you need UV mapping, this is where it can get a little bit tricky. Um, if I would go and just grab a material to replace one of these from my hard drive, right? So if I go to edit and I come down here and I browse for a material, right? And let me go and grab Um, I have some concrete materials in here from Lot Pixel that I downloaded recently. So let's just grab, I don't know, something like this material here. Or let me see if there's a cleaner one. And these are all from the website Lot pixel l-o-t-p-i-x-e-l dot com and they're all free to download or at least they used to be 
All right, so let's just go with that concrete. So it's going to load it in. It's going to replace the placeholder. And I guess it didn't do too bad. Um, I would obviously have to turn up probably by four or five times that number there. But there is a way to kind of define the mapping um, before I would drop something in. So if I go select, oh, that's right, I removed, I forgot I dropped all the materials down. Um, let me see if I can select active with same material. Nope, oh, it looks like it's selecting all of them. All right, so I'm just going to select a couple of these that I see that have the same material. And if I wanted to drop a texture on this, um, I go over this in detail in um, the video here on the channel, which is this, this video here, the multi-texture component video. So I go over it quite a bit in that video, but to just kind of demonstrate what we would do is we would create a unique material here. I'm going to grab that concrete again. And I'm going to remove the materials from these using TomTom's material tools. And that has an option to remove from selection. So that'll remove the materials down to the faces. It'll get rid of everything, the lines, the edges, everything that has a material. And if I would get in here and drop this in here, and this would be not aligned properly or aligned the way that I would want it to be. Let's say it was, uh, you know, we had edges around the outside that were kind of defining where the edges, if this was like a picture of a single paver. Well, from here, what we would do is we would want to actually get in and align this to how it needs to be. So I could get in and do something like this. And now this put this in here one to one. If I would select all, come up here to entity info and reassign the default material to that, right? I want to do the same thing. I don't want the group to have a material here either. Okay. So like that. So there's no material on there. And now if I would drop this in there, it'll retain on the faces that mapping that I did through any any material that I would put in there. Um, and I'm not, again, I'm not texturing the faces themselves. I am texturing the group, but the mapping itself is controlled. For some reason, it's controlled through those faces. But uh, let's go here, like... So even if I would put something like this, you, you could see that it would actually... Um, scale this to the same scale as I had set on that concrete originally. And again, there's no material on this. So if I would come back and just paint the outside of that group, that goes away. But where's the, what did we call it? Concrete test? Yeah. So now if I could paint that on there, you could see. And if these were all component instances, they would all have that same mapping. So when you get into a situation like this where you're maybe trying to do something like this and you want to drop different materials here, like maybe I can come and make this a little bit darker. Let's do a second version of this. And I want to drop it on everything that has this material. You know, I'm going to run into a, a situation there with, oh, I forgot I dropped, I dropped the, I instanced the materials to the faces. So, but yeah, if you watch that video, it kind of explains um, 
you know, these particular types of uh, objects where I'm using a seamless texture, this doesn't really apply to. It's situations like boards. So when we do the decking, right? So where I'm trying to align the board and it has a wood texture and that wood texture needs to be aligned to the longest edge on the board, that's where it comes in handy. This is a seamless material, so it doesn't really matter. So for this, I would probably just, you know, texture this from outside the group. Um, And through paints kind of being slow because of the bevel. Is anybody using through paint two, the new version? I find it to be a lot slower than the original version for some reason. So we would bring this up again to four or five times like we did before. There we go. But that's using through paint um, to just kind of get in, pick an edge, drop it in there. And if we needed to randomize these, we could do that manually with through paint. Or we can randomize those through a plugin from TIG called Texture Randomizer as well. So I can show you that in a second. Um, Let's go grab, let's actually just replace this like we were doing before, and that way it should replace across all of those. And then I just have to adjust the hue a little bit to vary it, since we already did the variation. Let me sample it. Let's just change it a little bit. Maybe pull the black down just a hair. Let's go sample this guy. Um, I'm assuming that's the one. Let me just double check. Yeah. Okay. And then I can do the same thing there. And I'm just using the same material here, but I'm just going to play with the black slider just to add a little bit of variation. Let's grab this one. And if they look a little bit too off, then I'll just go and kind of pull them a little bit closer so they don't look so so different that the contrast is distracting like this one might be a little too light something like that so these All right, so there's an issue with this one. It's uh, stretching really bad. So the, the way to get rid of that is I'm going to scale definition and then retexture it. So if I would hit reset scale, you can see that this is from, uh, for whatever reason, when we made them unique, it didn't, I guess I should have scaled the definition on all of them before that. So, yeah. There's a plugin from S4U that lets you basically scale the definition across all components. But you can see if I scale the definition that it'll fix that stretching that we're getting. And let me see here. S4U should be on the front page here as well. Oh, this is my extension, sorry. SU4U. And then it is right here. Thought I had it installed, but I guess I don't. So basically this will allow us to select all and then 
All right. Oh, here's the here's the toolbar. So you'll see, like, watch this square here, this one, these. They should all reset like that. Did you see that? So we basically fitch, fixed all the stretching that happened when we initially used S4U2 components to create um, all of these faces. Now, the other nice thing about S4U2, the component plugin, is it'll make, even if it's a face like this, where it can't necessarily make a component instance, um, because, you know, it's a weird shape or... I don't know that it could make those two into components. It will still make it into the group and it will align the bounding box to the face, which is something that the native group doesn't do. So I use it a lot for that reason, just to group a face. So if I have a face that's off axis and it's a little bit angled and I would just group it, look at the bounding box, right? But if I would group it with S4U and this same option, now look at the bounding box. The bounding box conformed to the actual orientation of the group. So the this, this SketchUp bounding box, there's another way to fix this. Um, it's the axis tool from Curic has an option to align the bounding box to the longest edge like that. And that fixed the bounding box as well. So, that's something to know um, with SketchUp because it happens quite a bit. So let's see here. Let me just sample. And these I don't think got the definition scaled. There we go. So that is basically how I would go about doing those. And we'll adjust the look of these again um, when it comes to time to render. It's just to kind of put some placeholders in here for now. I typically wouldn't even add, add those textures just because I don't want to slow down SketchUp. And a lot of times, you know, I'm trying to use like 4K or higher resolution textures. And if you put them in SketchUp as you start to build out your model, things start to slow down. So we do have some steps here. We looked at those. They look like just regular um, concrete steps. I'm sure they might be getting wrapped. Um, but for now, I think we, we looked at making those eight inches. So there's a couple ways to go about doing this. Um, there's a cool plugin called Step Extrude which I'll use quite a bit. So if I call that type eight, enter, I can just click there, click there, and that'll lift those up like that. So we could do that again, eight, like that. Um, let's run fix it 101 on these all to clean that up. And let's group this here. I don't think we grouped that. And I'm just going to raise this patio area right here up to the height of that top step, something like that for now. And I think this is a wall, but I'm just going to raise it up to there. Um, oops, I don't think I grouped this. So let me group that and let's raise it up. And now let's run fix it 101, clean that up. And these are our window wells back here. So I'm going to group separately. And these will probably go down something like this. And then I'm just going to grab these two groups here. And we're just going to use um, thicken and bring those down. Just run fix it 101 on everything. Make sure everything's clean as we go. And we're just going to bring that house down probably, I'm going to go eight feet just to kind of account for a basement floor. And 
I'm going to bring a copy of this up. Delete the, the floor in the center. And if I run Fix It 101 right here, it'll close this middle face like this. It'll clean everything up and close that face. So what I'll do sometimes is just select border edges, which is in Selection Toys. So if you go to Select Only Border Edges, it'll select all of those, copy them, then run Fix It 101, paste in place the border edges, make group and delete that. Right, so now I have kind of this clean group that I can start from for the walls, but I still have my markers down here that I can use if, if I need them for reference. I don't imagine that I will, but since, I'm, since I have uh, CAD architectural plans, but if I was modeling from photographs, I would definitely try to hang on to um, where all the doors and windows are marked. So I'm going to bring back rest of model, and we're just going to bring this up. Um, I'm going to bring it up to right there, call that first floor. I'm going to maybe scale this down for our basement like that. And I'm going to run Fix It 101 now that we have this extruded. I'm also going to unsoften everything. It looked like there was a couple softened edges. There's a couple spots here. Um, if I delete that, oh, I thought it would remove that face, but it didn't. Oh, okay, let's just close this bottom. Usually I'd connect two corner to corner and it'll generally close. Okay, something like that. And I'm just going to move a copy of... I just want... There we go. I'm just going to move a copy of that up. And that'll be the starting point for the first floor. And I'll have to bring in the CAD plans, but this will probably come up somewhere around 9 or 10 feet. So we're almost there, something like that. And I'm going to bring this wall down here, and I want to bring that up to... I'm just going to bring it up above for now, just to kind of block out where our window well is. And I think what I'm going to do is just connect both of these here as well. Like that. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to do a little more figuring in this area. I think this is going to be the screen area back here of some kind, but we'll figure all that out and we'll do another video. I think this is a a wall as well. I'm gonna bring this up eight feet for now, just to kind of, and then I think there's like some cutouts through here. It looked like. Let's run a quick cleanup on that. Make sure, again, working with clean geometry. And this will all probably come... I'm going to kind of do the same thing as I did before. Just bring this down as a copy. I'm going to clean it, group it. I'm just going to bring it up here. And this will just kind of close off this area here. We have another window well situation. I'm going to group those. Bring this down. And let's kind of pull this group down here as well, just for now. And that'll remind me that it's a window well, so I don't have to keep looking at the plan. Okay. So I think I'm getting close to the point I want to call it. Um, I don't know if uh, anyone's still viewing, but... I think we can pick up on this and you guys can let me know if you want me to maybe model the house next time and go through that process of building the home and the way that I would tackle that. Um, I do have I don't want to necessarily give away the uh, the address and stuff of the home but I do have some plans that I can crop out and we can build the home. 
um, next time as well. And it's just really going to be the back of the home. So I'm pretty sure I have some prints here. So let me just, let me check this really quick. Uh, I don't, again, I just don't want to give away the, the homeowner's information if it's on here. And let me see if I can scale this and crop this really quick. It's still loading. It's like 24 pages. Okay. Um, all right, there we go. So I do have some prints here. And here's the back. So we do have some really good elevations of the back that we could use to model. I don't think I have the CAD files for the house. That The house looks like it was built a few years ago. So, But we do have these that we can use, the raster images, and scale them, set them up, and use these to help us proportion out the windows and stuff and kind of figure out that porch area. So if you want, next time we can go through that. So you guys let me know uh, what you want to do. I can kind of show you my process. Um, again, I'm not trying to do like a tutorial here. I'm just really more or less trying to show you how I work. Um, I've been using SketchUp for 15 years professionally almost every single day. And there's just kind of a lot of things that I do which are second nature to me. But, you know, maybe somebody else could benefit from some of those little tips and tricks and just the way that. I work it out as a workflow and you know, it's stuff that I do over and over every single time. But like I said, there's a lot of plugins involved, but I think, uh, you know, it starts to make sense as we're trying to build things um, with groups ahead of time. And then I'm, a lot of the plugins that I'm using is really trying to just prevent me from having to open and close groups constantly. Because if you're building everything in individual groups, the, one of the biggest pains in SketchUp is to constantly open and close the group. So um, one of the, the great plugins that I use is from Curic called Two Level. I don't know if you guys know about this plugin, but basically it lets you get down inside of a group and, oops, wrong shortcut. Yeah, I am not happy with Through Paint 2. I don't know if you guys are using it, but it is slow for me. Even when I open it, it just, it lags constantly. And the old Through Paint was so fast. And for whatever reason, when you install the new Through Paint, it removes the old through paint from your toolbar. So you kind of are stuck with just the one. So I don't know, I might revert back to the original. Like I'm literally stuck here trying to use through paint, but the two level plugin is great. Um, you can call it and it will basically allow you to dig down to the most nested group or component and either choose the face. Uh, it's this plugin right here choose the face or to, to be inside of that last group. Obviously you can do this through the outliner, but you know, when your work, when your workflow is trying to stay, you know, quick and make almost to be able to build as fast as you can think, it's nice to have a lot of these things right here at your fingertips. So I'll have, um, this plugin right here that I can just very quickly go all the way inside of whatever group I'm working on. Um, and now I'm all the way outside here, so I could just click on that and very quickly zoom to selection and start working on whatever I'm working on and then shortcut to close back out. So those kind of workflow things that, 
when you start to build everything in groups, it's like, okay, well, which plugins can I find which will allow me to push pull inside a group? You have joint push pull. So I want to texture inside the group. We have through paint. Um, you know, I want to bevel edges inside the group. We have round or Frito corner, like all of these plugins. Uh, we have the whole Curic draw in object line, which is really great. And that lets you get in and, you know, I can do things like pull edges. Um, I can push pull inside a group. I can offset inside the group. I can do all kinds of stuff and I never have to actually open the nested groups or components. So a lot of my workflow shortcuts have to do with just the annoyance of not wanting to open groups all the time and finding ways around that, if that makes sense. So, um, hey, YouTube, good to see you, man. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, do you think that sounds, thank you too. Um, appreciate I appreciate you guys. So if you weren't here earlier, this was obviously the winning with SketchUp channel. I changed the name and rebranded things. Um, the reason why I decided to do some rebranding was really, I don't want to just make SketchUp videos anymore. So I've, you know, the past few years, I've been making, or I've been working in 3ds Max a lot. I've been working in, you know, all these different render engines, um, you know, Photoshop, just the whole spectrum of software that I use in my workflow. I want to make content around and not just limit it to SketchUp. So the rebranding and the name and stuff is really trying to give myself a platform that I can get out of the box of just making SketchUp content. Although SketchUp is a large part of what I do. It's probably what I use 75 to 80% of the time. But then, you know, all the rendering, I, I never really made rendering tutorials on this channel. So I want to kind of branch out a little bit away from SketchUp, which is why I wanted to change the name and get back to making content. So yeah, I'm excited about that. So look for um, some new content here moving forward. And if you guys have ideas for videos or things you want me to make content on, um, finally have like, a decent studio set up that I can do that. So please let me know. I'd be happy to share my knowledge and my experience as a professional uh, landscape, what I could call landscape visualization artist. All right. So um, do you guys have any other questions before I get out of here and go grab a bite to eat? Uh, yeah. Good to see you too. So I, this is actually the first time I've ever done this live. So I don't fully know how to even see if anybody's in here or um, looks like maybe four people. I'm not sure. So I'll figure this all out. This is still a work in progress. I, I appreciate everybody who stuck around. And if you guys picked up any tips, um, we can get back to this and maybe I can kind of make this a, a regular thing um, because I'm working all the time in SketchUp. I'm having projects every day that I'm doing. And, you know, normally I'm just trying to pick little pieces that I can make a tutorial or something on. But I feel like without the interaction, you don't get as much of maybe being able to ask a question or, or if I forgot something, or maybe I can learn from you guys as well. So, all right, I'm going to leave it here. Um, I appreciate everybody again. I hope you guys all have a great evening and I guess I'll see you in the next video. So signing off.